Good evening. Welcome everyone that is here and welcome to you as well that are joining us uh, via Facebook. We are glad that you can join us this evening, that we together can walk with Jesus during this holy week as we experience his passion and his love, which he demonstrated for us. So we'll begin with our bulletin and for you online, I believe it's pinned there at the bottom. Let us stand. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Most merciful God, God, we we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We We have have not loved you with our whole heart We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, Give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 70, which will be read in unison. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me turn back because they were ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary nor lose heart. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought, because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. The word of the Lord. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. This Holy Wednesday, we find ourselves with Jesus at what we refer to often as the Last Supper, as the Paschal meal that they were sharing together. And we hear of his betrayal by one of those that was close to him, one who had journeyed with him a fellow disciple, one who had witnessed his miracles, the power of God on display through Jesus' very life, and yet he's being betrayed. I don't know how you would handle it. I don't know even how I would handle it. I think one of the ways I would feel with the betrayal is just a sense of defeat and dejection. But I don't see any of that in Jesus at all. Some of us might respond with anger or revenge or defensiveness, so who knows what, but not Jesus. Jesus simply offers Judas a piece of bread and says, do what you need to do. Jesus wasn't surprised. He was telling the disciples what was to come. Matter of fact, he'd been trying to tell the disciple this over and over again as he's been walking with them, telling them that the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem and die. And you remember Peter said, there's no way. 
And he said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me because you're not on board with what God's purposes are. And I was always, and I constantly reflect on how does Jesus do this? Now we know that Jesus is the Son of God, but he is also quite human. And at this moment, he says he's troubled in spirit. He feels the pain of what is about to come. Yet he is still joyful and confident in what the Father is asking him to do. As I was looking at this, our verses earlier, it says in Hebrews, he says, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Who for the sake of joy. And as I reflected on that, what was his joy? What was the very reason he came? To unite us with the Father. To take away all barriers to a relationship with the Father and with himself. And so this was his joy. This was his desire, was to only do his Father's will. In uh, John, earlier in John, he told the disciples at one point, but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. And this was also a part of Jesus' power and strength was his intimate relationship with the Father. So that even though someone else in his close friendships in this world was betraying him, yet he knew he would never be betrayed by his Father. That his life, that all that he was doing was completely secure in his Father. Matter of fact, he was anchored in the truth of the reality of what started his whole ministry. Behold, this is my beloved He's at his baptism. And what is true about Jesus is true about us is that our lives are firmly secure in the life of God through Jesus Christ, through our own baptism. That we too are God's beloved so that as we face the betrayals and the hurts and the challenges of this world, we too can meet those with a deep sense of peace and strength that comes from the Father. So he stays focused this entire, throughout this whole ordeal. And so as we continue through this Holy Week, as we continue to reflect on all that Jesus is going to go through, what I invite you to do is to notice how does Jesus respond? And then put yourself in that place. How would I respond? And when I look at that, I go, oh, Lord, I don't think I could respond as you responded. But what I do love about this uh, Hebrews verse, it says, Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Why does Jesus go through all that he's going to go through during this holy week? So that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Jesus has already walked this path for us. Jesus is with us in the midst of all that we face in the world. And because he has already gone there, he can help us and strengthen us and sustain us as we face the challenges of our own day, whether it be as a community, as an individual, as a country, as a world. Jesus is present. Jesus understands. And Jesus can see us through to bring glory to God, which is to do God's will and God's purposes in the world, which is to unite us with the Father, to unite, help people come into that loving relationship with God. Amen.
prayers of the people, Form 2 can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Archbishop Justin, for our presiding bishop, Michael, and our bishops, Andrew, Jeff, Bishop Suffragan-elect, oh, Kay, and Hector, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. We also pray for our seminarian, Elisa Stebbing, and for her family. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. A uh, few announcements, just really one announcement, and that is the, that we will continue to have uh, services throughout this Holy Week, both in person and online. Uh, so those will be at 7 uh, tomorrow night for Monday, Thursday, and then Good Friday at 7 as well. And then you can join us for the uh, Easter Vigil as well as at 7, and then we'll have the four services on Sunday at 8, 10, one and the eight and one are outdoors and the ten and the five will be indoors and we'll be having uh, Eucharist uh, the host only at, uh, starting from the Easter Vigil and all those services on Sunday as well as the Sundays following that so just for your information as well as so just that's for you to know so now let us join together and uh, we are bold to pray as Christ taught us Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And will you please join me for an act of spiritual communion? Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. We may live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.